It is a tool used by top scientists in the world. Nikola Tesla, Albert Einstein, Thomas Edison, and Richard Feynman used it to solve challenging problems and visualize new scientific theories. Award-winning movie directors like Christopher Nolan and James Cameron used this in their movie creation process. In fact, the movie Inception was actually inspired by Christopher Nolan's personal experience with lucid dreaming. Indeed, he is an avid lucid dreamer himself. The famous surrealist painter Salvador Dali used lucid dreaming long before they were scientifically verified in the lab. He used dream incubation technique to pre-program his dreams and produced many dream-inspired works, such as dream caused by the flight of a bee around a pomegranate a second before awakening. So what is lucid dreaming? Lucid dreaming is a dream in which the dreamer is aware that they are dreaming. During the lucid dream, the dreamer may gain some control over dream character, narrative, and environment. For example, if you are not in a mood to chase a murderer down the street, you can actually shift the narrative. Instead of running, maybe you can decide to chat with the murderer, only to discover that he is not actually a murderer, but some guy trying to return some dropped wallet. Maybe you switch up the story completely and propel yourself into a different area of your subconscious with brand new setting, characters, and theme. You decide where you go and what you'll do when you get there. If this all sounds a lot like Inception, you're not wrong. The movie was inspired by the concept of lucid dreaming. In 2010, Christopher Nolan's blockbuster put lucid dreaming on the map for all of us regular people. Today, with the subconscious back in the collective conversation, it's easier than ever to lucid dream. Lucid dreamers may use certain techniques in order to influence their brains to dream about a particular problem or idea. Lucid dreamers are able to train their minds to work toward their goals while they sleep, such as improving their confidence or athletic ability. Lucid dreamers are also able to open up their minds to be more creative by exploring the dreams that they experience. By taking agency and making active decisions through the dream, rather than passively experiencing them, they can make creative connections and test how things work. Each day, we encounter innumerable pieces of stimuli. Of course, we can't process everything in the moment as we would never get anything done. So the vast majority of our indirect experiences are stored within our subconscious. We dump a lot into this mysterious internal world. But that doesn't mean it's an emotional junkyard. In fact, the subconscious is an extremely sacred place. We tuck away some of our most life-changing memories, powerful emotions, and creative musings in this landscape. In a beautiful irony, accessing your dream world is actually the key to your honest reality. Lucid dreaming can help you unlock that door, too. So how do you start lucid dreaming? To start with, do some basic prep. Get your room nice and clean. Make sure there won't be any light coming into the room from computer screens, etc. Make the room as dark as possible when you go to sleep. We should mention at this point that the method shown here is going to involve waking up a little bit earlier than you normally do, only for a few seconds. It's literally just to wake up your mind. You won't need to get out of bed. Don't worry. For the scientists, technical people among you, the method is called the wake-back-to-bed technique. As the name suggests, it involves setting an alarm, waking up your mind, and then going back to bed. There are very good reasons for this. Your brain is most active during REM, rapid eye movement, sleep, which happens a couple of hours before you wake up naturally. As a first step, you've got to think about lucid dreaming for the rest of the day. Read about it and talk to your friend about what you're going to do in your lucid dream. The key is to get yourself focused on what you're about to do. Then, you've got to practice doing reality checks, where you test whether you are awake or asleep. You should perform reality checks about 10 times a day. But if you're trying to do this tonight, perform at least 25 of these reality checks today before going to bed. The most effective reality test is this one. Hold out your hand and with your other finger, try to push a finger through your palm. Really expect it to go through. And only when it doesn't go through, say to yourself, oh, I must be awake. As you're expecting it to go through, ask yourself, am I dreaming? In a dream, the fingers will always go through your hand, but in real life, they never will. Do this test lots of times throughout the day, and eventually, it will happen in your dream. 
When it happens in your dream, the finger will go through your palm and you'll say to yourself, I must be dreaming. And now you're lucid. There are many different ones you can do, but we found that this finger palm push test is the most effective one, and it will help you lucid dream fast. Later on, you can experiment with other reality checks if you want. The next step is to turn off all screens an hour before you go to bed. Right before you go to bed, don't look at any screen. Turn your phone to silent, but make sure the alarm still works, and don't watch any more TV. This is because you want your body to produce enough of the hormones that make you sleepy, and these are slowed down by artificial light. If possible, turn the lights down or off and just relax for a bit. If not, then just read a book for an hour or so before going to bed. This really starts to wind you down and relax your mind. You could even wear a sleep mask and just meditate. Step four is to set your alarm. Whatever time that you would normally wake up, set your alarm about two hours before that. If you normally wake up at nine, set the alarm for seven. Choose an alarm that is going to wake you up but isn't too loud. You want something soothing and easy to listen to, and you need to put your phone close enough to you that you can turn it off without getting out of bed and without opening your eyes. Choose a soft-sounding bit of music or a relaxing tone. Whatever alarm you decide to have, make sure it's not going to snooze. You want it to wake you up one time and then turn off. When you've set your alarm, make sure you have your dream diary on hand with a working pen on top of it. Have all of these things within reach from the bed so you don't need to get out. Next step is to wake up with your eyes closed. You want to wake up to the alarm without opening your eyes. Keep your eyes wide shut, so to speak. This means wake your mind up, but keep your eyes shut. It doesn't matter all that much if you do open your eyes for a second or so, but it's best not to. You basically want to go right back to sleep as soon as you've turned the alarm off. This is why it's called wake back to bed, because you're literally waking up for a second only to go back to sleep. But there is a hugely important thing to remember here. This next stage, the final stage to having a lucid dream tonight, is the most important, as you're going to be performing a wake-induced lucid dream. Sort of. It's more like a combination between a wake back to bed and a wake induced. Because you've woken up early, you're going to be activating your brain, but you will also be going back to sleep. This is why we've asked you to perform loads of reality checks, because hopefully, if you accidentally drift off, you'll do the reality check in the dream and become lucid anyway. It's sort of like a fail safe. So, the main part of this method is what happens next. You've woken up early, turned your alarm off, and are now laying there awake with your eyes closed. Next, you're going to stay awake in your mind, but let your body drift off to sleep. Now, this may be scary for you if you've not done it before, because you'll experience what's known as sleep paralysis, where your body is unable to move, but your mind is awake and self-aware. You're basically going to feel your body shut itself down, all while being aware in your head. Don't worry. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's not dangerous in any way, and it's the way you'll be able to lucid dream tonight. When you've done this a couple of times, it will be fun and easy. It may feel weird and scary, but just relax and don't try to move. So, like we've said before, you're going to be laying there awake, but your body will be frozen. The reason for this is that you've interrupted yourself during REM sleep so your body goes into overdrive and tries to put you straight back into that deep state of sleep. The key here, though, is to stay awake while this happens. You're going to keep focused and thinking while your body shuts down, and this is what puts you directly into a dream which is lucid from the start because your mind never goes to sleep at all with this method. Now, just relax and allow yourself to drift into what's best described as hallucinations. You'll see colors, shapes, flashes of scenery, and random people. You may even hear sounds. At first, they'll be random and unformed, but as you drift into it, they'll start to link together and last for longer than just a few seconds. Soon enough, you'll be so deeply involved that you'll be able to look around. And that's it. You're in a lucid dream and can control it completely. Here are some things to remember about lucid dreaming, especially if you are doing it for the first time. Don't get too excited. 
you'll just wake yourself up too quickly. Relax and guide the dream rather than controlling it at first. Explore it. If you get too excited, you'll wake up. So enjoy the process. Just like everything else, you won't become a master lucid dreamer the first time. You'll need discipline, patience, and practice. So, are you going to lucid dream tonight?